Hi friends, and thanks so much for being here. I'm Anna Hellman, and today I wanna to do a project showing you some different ways to use blending brushes. If you're not very familiar using blending brushes, or if you just want some more ideas of how to use them, I hope you'll stick around and watch. We're going to make an absolutely stunning card, or I'm gonna show two levels. We're gonna do one that's pretty simple, and one that's stepped up with some extra techniques. I think you're going to enjoy what I have to share today. Let's get started. This piece right here is the beginnings of the card we are going to create. And I'm curious what this looks like. Does it look like designer paper? Uh, this is actually a piece of vanilla cardstock that I stamped with this beautiful, perfectly detailed stamp. It is one large background stamp. And when I first saw it, I thought I, I passed it over. I wasn't going to add this to my collection. The more I looked at it, I thought, I think you could do some really neat things with this. So as you can see, this is beautiful. This alone would make a beautiful background for a card or they could be Several of these could be stamped on scrapbook page, but we are going to use this as our base for uh, doing some doing some techniques with the blending brushes. Now I have I already created one of these. I can't wait to share it with you. I'm going to wait until the end to share my stepped up version of this card. Uh, we're going to create a little bit simpler one right now. And for my first one, I used my regular blending brushes that I've had in my collection for quite a while. For this one right here, we are actually going to use my brand new small blending brushes, which I'm really excited about because I'm going to be able to do a little bit more detailed blending that I could, cannot do with my large brushes. So several of the products that I'm showing today are brand new, released, being released January 5th and part of our new mini catalog. So. Uh, I'm really excited to share these with you. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to take this image and add some color to different places. Now, the reason I thought about passing this over, the reason I was passing it over originally was because of all of the detail. And I'm not one to sit down and do a lot of coloring to take an image like this and markers or something and, and color that. Every once in a while I do for a video and I typically love the results, uh, but that is not something by nature that I would do on my own. So uh, I wanted to show a way that, uh, another way to color a detailed image like this. And as you can see, we're going to be using blending brushes. Now, if you're wondering like, Anna, you said you were gonna use your small blending brushes, now you have your large one, you are correct. For my large areas where I want really smooth color, I am still going to use my large brushes because they are going to give me the best chance of having nice, smooth, even color in a large area. So as you can see, I pick up some of that color from my ink pad using a swirling motion. Then I typically uh, blot some of it over here on my scrap paper and then blend it onto my project, either using a swirling motion or sometimes, depending on the area I'm trying to apply it to, like right here, I'm just trying to get my color on these straight areas and not necessarily in the centerpiece. Uh, so there I'm going back and forth, but typically I use a circular motion. So here you can see we are starting to get uh, this center area colored. I'm using Petal Pink ink right now. And now I'm going to switch it up and take that back. Let's do one more thing with the Petal Pink. I am going to show you basically the same thing as what you're gonna see if we get to the end and you love my detailed card. You can create it in a very similar way and I'll, I'll explain any differences that, that, that there are. But uh, the coloring I'm doing right now is, is going to be the same. So I added a little bit of this petal pink just on the side pieces where you can see that the, the lines that go back and forth, the check pattern, that is where I'm adding a little bit more of this petal pink on the edges. And I did not add any at the corners. This is, you can do so many things with blending brushes and think about 
how can you add a color in ways that it changes as it goes across your project. So you can do an ombre effect where it's darker in certain spots, like I kind of have it darker here and here, and then it gets a little bit lighter towards the center and lighter over here. You can do rainbow effects, you can mix colors. There's so many different things you can do. Sometimes we really want that nice, smooth, even color. And sometimes maybe you wanna have it darker at the top and lighter at the bottom or, or add in some different colors and create some effects that way. Okay, now that I have that, I believe for the rest of this, I will be using my small blending brushes, my new ones. Now, right now I only have these three in my collection, but it works out well because I'm gonna use one for my browns, one for my pinks, and one for the color of green that I am using. As you can see, this is my very first time using these. So I'm gonna pick up the color the same way, blot a little bit on my project. Now, if you are new to using blending brushes or if you feel like you need some practice i i hear from people sometimes i'm just not very good at using these blending brushes and so i i would word that that maybe you just need to practice around practice with them a little bit play around a little bit uh if you feel like that's you i really encourage you to start with light colors if you tried once or the the times that you've already tried were with dark colors and it didn't go very well dark colors are more difficult to blend and blend smoothly than light colors with light colors you have a lot of room for error so these two colors i've used so far uh, they're very light the petal pink and the sahara sand they're very light there's a lot of room for error if i get a little glob on there it's much less noticeable than if it's with navy or blackberry bliss ink for example okay so i wanted to add color into the center part it's not exactly a hexagon but it has six sides so we'll call it that and i wanted to add some different color to that what i want is to take this beautiful detailed image and make it appear that i have spent a lot of time coloring it in when really I could blend this, if I wasn't talking so much, I could blend this in several minutes and be done. Okay, now that we have this, let's go ahead and let's add some color to this beautiful large flower in the center. And I am going to remember what I told you. I'm gonna use my small blending brush, not my large one. And at the end, when you see my other card compared to this one, I think you'll be able to see a few differences just as a result of whether I use the large blending brushes or the small ones. So after I pick up some fresh ink from my ink pad, as you can see, most of the time I blot a little bit over here. And then as I lower it to my project, I'm using a very, very soft touch at first. And then after I have used up a little bit of that ink on the brush, then I start applying a little bit more pressure. That way I don't, and if you just drop it right onto your paper and apply a lot of pressure all at once, you can end up with those darker spots, those globs that you may not want. Okay, now that we have this, let's go ahead and let's add some color to these they look like leaves to me so i'm calling them leaves they might just be a design now i have some pear pizzazz ink and i'll add some green here i debated what colors to use and i would love to play around with this more create some more cards with these the same stamp and the same blending techniques but switch up the colors I think you could create so many beautiful projects just like this and just switching up the colors a little bit. I thought about stamping for, for this one right here. I stamped the image with crumb cake ink. You will see on my finished one, I stamped with a darker color of ink. I stamped with early espresso to show you the difference in which color you choose to stamp with. And I thought about stamping that whole background image with one of the pink colors, but I didn't actually try that. I think that would turn out really beautiful as well. Okay, now that we have this, we're going to start using our blending brushes in a little bit different way. And I am going to call this 
thumping or thunking. I, I don't know. You, sh you should name this for me. Uh, you can comment below and, and give me a good name for this. But what we're going to do is take our brushes and I'm going to ink them up a little different way and I'm going to use them a different way. So I am just going to hit it on my ink pad and then I am going to hit it on my project. So I realized the point of blending brushes is to be able to create this lovely, beautiful, even color. But this is kind of a fun way to use them that gives us a little bit different look. And I personally like it. I wouldn't always do this, uh, but can you see those darker areas from, from what I was just doing? I think it really adds something to this. So I'm gonna do this on the center flower with my flirty flamingo ink, and then we are going to color these flowers around the edge in the same way. So I'll start with these ones on the corners, and you can play around with this. You may not wanna lift your brush up real far, or maybe you do, maybe you wanna go crazy. Uh, the farther you lift up, the, at least for me, the harder it is to aim and get my color in the right spot. But if you do lift up farther, you can get a little bit darker, darker spots and some more color variation. And I love that. I love when I am adding color to a project, whether it's with markers or water painters or something like this, I love that color variation. The more color variation I get, I feel like the more it makes everything pop and the more, the more I typically like my finished project. Okay, now I'm going to use the same brush for a lighter color of pink. Let's bring in some Blushing Bride and I'll ink it up the same way. And these little tiny flowers on the sides will add some color to them this way. So as you can probably guess, if you want to color this image in, it would probably take, it would take a little while. Uh, and if you love coloring, that's awesome. This would be absolutely beautiful colored in with another coloring tool. But if you like the way it looks, but you want something a little bit simpler, something a little bit faster to do, this technique right here is perfect. Now I am going to add a little bit of flirty flamingo to those ones in the center, make them a little bit darker. And last but not least, I just want these little paisley designs to have some color. So I brought my Sahara sand back in and I'm going to add a little bit there. Okay. Now, before we call this quits, I'll show it up close here for a second. Before we call this quits, I want to make this look, uh, th this design just looks like something old and so something old and beautiful to me. Uh, so this is something I love to do on a lot of my projects, especially when I have my blending brushes out anyway. I am going to add a little bit of color around the edges to make it look distressed or aged. So this is my early espresso ink. I am just going to blend very little bit at the edges. And actually I probably should have brought in for if you just want to do a little tiny bit at the edges, these new small blending brushes will be perfect for that. So I went back to my old ways and I'm using my big one again, but small one would be perfect for this. I don't know if I mention it, so I just got my new blending brush storage rack. So I'm enjoying having that here. I'll bring it in real quick and show you. This is another thing that is brand new along with these small blending brushes that you can do some more detail with. So I believe this piece is finished in the way that we're going to use it for this particular card. So I already have my card base created. We're gonna finish this one up quickly and then I can't wait to show you that 
one that I did a few extra techniques on. So this stamp is actually larger than a four and a quarter by five and a half card base. It is just barely larger. So what I did, I stamped it onto a little bit larger piece of vanilla cardstock. And then I trimmed the edges down so that it looked centered. And this is just smaller than four and a quarter by five and a half now. Okay, so I put it onto a vanilla card base and I really like how that little tiny vanilla border shows around the outside. I feel like it really makes this piece we just created pop and stand out. Now, we're going to do one more technique with blending brushes and this is for, we're going to do this with our greeting stamp. This large congratulations stamp and the other one that you're going to see on my second card came from this kind and sincere stamp set. I am such a fan of big, bold greetings, and I wanted something bold so that you could actually see what, what I'm about to show you, so it would be noticeable. With a little tiny greeting, I'm not sure this would show up. So what I'm going to do is we're gonna do some more thunking, but then we are going to apply the color to the stamp and stamp once with this and see what we have. And the beauty about doing this with a Stamparatus is that you can repeat step several times in the same spot. So right now I'm using my Blushing Bride ink. You'll see on my final one, I did not use any pink when I was doing this technique. I just used this color right here, Early Espresso. Now, if you use Early Espresso first and then add pink, you definitely wanna make sure you clean your stamp off in between. Since I'm using brown second, it's not as important. So I can do this as many times as I want. What I wanted was a distressed aged look. So this is kind of, kind of something fun you could do. It, and again, you could do this in so many different ways. You could add one color and then you could clean off your stamp and you could, you could blend into a different color. Like you could do a rainbow effect. You could go from a lighter blue to a darker blue. You can mix them together like I'm doing here but I'll bring this up a little bit closer and hopefully you can see there's a little bit of that pink in there, but then we have this very rustic looking effect to, to that sentiment stamp. Let's quickly cut this out and we're going to finish this card up. So Actually, I'm going to bring in the, my second card and let's talk about it while I am cutting and we'll get both of them finished up here. So here is my other one, okay? Show it to you up close and then I'm going to talk about it while I am cutting. If you ever wanna see still photos of my cards, if you're working on recreating them or you wanna print off pictures or anything like that, you can always use, there's always a link in my video description that takes you to my website where you will see still photos of the projects I'm creating. So keep that in mind. So let's talk about what's different about the card sitting right beside me than the one we are creating together. Let's talk about that background. So after I created that background, before I attached it to the card, I did a couple of things. The first thing I did, and you may have noticed the flower in the center and those leaves are popped up. They are popped up from the background. I actually cut those out from the background using a craft knife and a cutting mat. I just went around, this is not my craft knife, but I can show you the idea. And I just cut these pieces out, okay? I have one that actually swip, my little knife swivels, which made it really easy, a lot easier for cutting this flower out. But that was how I cut those out. I really wanted those to stand out. So you can see hopefully that those are actually popped up from the rest. Now, after I did that, I 
embossed this background piece, okay? I decided I didn't want the flower and the leaves embossed, but I wanted the rest of it embossed. I did that with the, it's called quatrefoil something, quatrefoil tile, I believe, embossing folder. I thought about blending over that after to kind of pick up the pattern from the blending brush a little bit more, but this is busy enough. I was afraid, I was afraid that was gonna be a step too far, so I decided not to. So I embossed that background, I attached it to my card, I used my blending brushes, let's do one more thing with blending brushes, and I aged the edges of my, all of the pieces that are popped out. So that center flower, the leaves, and I also did this to the greeting. So after I had aged them, I went ahead and attached those pieces with dimensionals to my project. Now I like how this looks and I'm debating whether it looks too new for my project. And I am going to add a little bit more color. We're gonna do a little bit of thunking just kind of all over this because that vanilla doesn't really blend with the rest of the card anymore. So there we look, looks a little bit more like it's going to blend. Now this one, because my greeting is long, I am going to turn this card sideways. I know for, to my eyes, it looks like it belongs this way. This is the way it looks to me, like that flower is turned upright. But because I have this really long congratulations greeting, I do wanna use it. I thought it would be a perfect wedding card. And I'm going to create this one this way. One more thing, because we always need a little something extra and I wanted to give you ideas for blending brushes today, so I don't want to disappoint you. Uh, one more way you can use your blending brushes. This, I think, is the neatest ribbon. I've been using it quite a lot. It is, what is it, natural finish ribbon, I believe. So I'll have links to all these products in the video description below. And I added a little bit of color to my ribbon. I thought this was a really nice color, really nice color to start with, but, and actually for this one, I may leave it just the way it is. I think that looks nice. For this one, I decided to add a little, I did add a little bit of pink and I added a little bit of that early espresso color as well. Just for fun, I'll show you. You can do the blending pattern or you can do the thunking whatever but i just like that little bit of color variation for this project that looks so aged okay so we will add this to our project add the greeting i may add a few little few little embellishments but this is our project for today so I would love to know what you think about this. If you loved it, if you see some ideas for maybe some more ways we could use blending brushes on a project like this or another one, I wanna make sure this piece sticks to that ribbon. So I am going to use a little bit of glue and lay it right on here. So thanks so much for watching along. I hope you have a blessed day and i hope you'll be back again next time when i'll be here helping you to hand make with love